this hello. is hello. Hello, is this Barbara? Yes, this is Barbara. Hi, Barbara. How are you? I'm well, thank you. You sound like you're miles away. Oh, I'm sorry. Let, well, let me move a little closer. Is that better? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you can hear me. How do I sound? I hear you. You're perfect. There we go. That's because I have a big mouth, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Well, good. <laughs> All right. Well, let me do let me do the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to welcome our featured guest for today. She is a singer and an actress and an author and someone everybody remembers, of course, from the television series I Dream of Jeannie. And she's here to talk about her brand new children's book. We're very excited to welcome Miss Barbara Eden to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you. I'm so happy to be with both of you. I just wanted to say that I really appreciate the fact that you were read to as a child and it sparked a great imagination. Uh, that you brought us great things uh, throughout the years, the movies that you've done, things like I Dream a Genie. But it also inspired you to write a book. Now, that's something different for you in the fact you wrote a book before, like a memoir, but this is your first children's book. Is that right? Yes, it is. It is. And uh, I was very lucky that I met Dustin War- Warburton, who helped me write it. Um, it took us a long time to finally get it pulled together, but he uh, he and I met in Australia, and uh, I I told him at that time how books and uh, my aunt and my mother had such a huge influence on me. Before I even knew how to read, they read to me. Mm-hmm. And then the minute I, you know, in the first grade, when you first start learning to read, they took me right to the library, <laughs> and uh, I got my library card. And it's it's it was a gift that just, as they say, uh, keeps on giving. And I I thought. You know, the children today, they don't, I, I don't think they have that. Uh, they're looking at uh, screens all the time. And, and their brains have to be stimulated um, beyond the eye. Mm-hmm. You know, they, <laughs> they yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, you, you, go to, you go to wonderful, magical places if you, if you can read. Uh, you make those places what you imagine. And uh, so that's why I wrote the book. Well, you know, in a way, life kind of imitates art. And, of course, you're known mostly for I Dream a Genie. There's other things for sure, but I Dream a Genie is the thing that everybody remembers the most. And not coincidentally, this book kind of includes that theme a little bit about a genie or a male genie called a gen. Is that right? That is correct, yes. Mm Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I know you probably don't want to give too much away, but uh, of course, for our listeners, just so that you guys know, the book is called Barbara and the Gin. And what can you tell us about the story? So it's about a little girl named Barbara, right? And, and what happens to her? Well, she, she goes to the, uh, to the library with her mother, and uh, <clears throat> the librarian there uh, tells her about this wonderful book, and he recommends that she read it. And she gets home, and there's... There's no print in the book. <laughs> she doesn't understand what's going on here. And, of course, then this wonderful Jin, who, who is a, uh, a male genie, actually, mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, comes out of the book. And then, and then her, her she has all kinds of wonderful, wonderful uh, experiences. And uh, she learns... What's most important in life is kindness and, above all, understanding. Um, I, I just love the whole idea and concept, and thank you, Dustin, for doing that. <laughs> well, you know, it's something that's going to be enjoyed by adult people like myself. I, I grew up watching you on TV and in the movies, but I can imagine your shows and your movies, and particularly I Dream of Jeannie mentioning it once again, you probably have a lot of little kids that love you and know who you are, and this is going to be really cool for them. You know, do you agree? Well, I hope so, yes. <laughs> I hope so. I hope uh, I hope they'll put down their phones and their iPads <laughs> <laughs> and well, pick up a book. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's it's interesting that you mention that because I, I actually agree with you, Barbara. I, I like physical books. I grew up reading them. To this day, I like holding a book in my hand. 
But of course, everybody today tends to always have the Kindle or the iPad or the this or the that. So tell me about the format that this book is is going to be released in. Is it going to be available in digital? Is it going to be available in physical copies? And uh, where and when can people get it? Well, it was uh, uh, first, it it was released August 3rd, so it's been out. Mm -hmm. Um, It... um, they can buy it online. It's on Amazon, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, in any bookstore, right. <laughs> it'll be there. Now, I want to ask you a crazy trivia question. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I sure. had heard that in the story, you had to be careful not to say that the gin came out of a bottle because of some copyright with I Dream of Genie. Is that correct or is that wrong? Instead, No, of that's correct. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So how did that come about? I mean, did did you originally start writing it came out of a bottle, then you had to change it to a lamp? Or? Well, I think we found out early on about that. Uh-huh. I, I knew that. Um, you know, when, <laughs> when, when the show went off the air, uh, they wouldn't let me have my costume oh, at okay. all. They were so afraid I'd go <laughs> running around in it. It's the last thing in the world I would have done. But, <laughs> but I, uh, you know, I knew. I knew, and of course they own, they own it. I don't own it. Yeah. Well, so it's, uh, I understand. Bad news for Christine Aguilera. I think she did a song called "Genie Out of a Bottle" or something. <laughs> she she's in big trouble. I guess I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. I guess so. <laughs> and, you know, it's really cool because, like I said, adults would want this book too. At least I would. Uh, I have it. In fact, if I didn't get one from you and thank you for it, I'd be out buying one for sure. But you have other things, too, that I want to touch on. Uh, you're my calendar girl, and you really are now because you've got a calendar. Is that right? Oh, my goodness, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about that. Well, uh, about the calendar? Yes. Well, it's just a calendar, <laughs> <laughs> you know, with photos uh, about... <clears throat> my whole career, I guess, not yeah. just uh, uh, not just Jeannie. I, I guess uh, the, the, some of the pictures on there is uh, rare on scene publicity shots of uh, you uh, in a costume for the show for I Dream of Jeannie. Is that right? Things that I have never seen, yes. Wow. 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 Yeah. That brings back memories. And of yes, course, it does. <laughs> one other thing I got to mention everybody's excited because they've been talking about this on Facebook for a while. And, and this is all wonderful stuff. And it, it's good news to all the fans, especially now. In this time, we're we're still worried about COVID and, and having to still be shuttered in a little bit, whatever. Is the complete box set of I Dream a Genie? Now, a lot of people was asking. I don't know if you know if in all of the episodes on the box set, if they use the original theme songs and intro, because I guess it changed over uh, a couple of years. Do you know if it has like everything intact or? I think it has everything intact. Wow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. It, it never occurred to me that it wouldn't. Yeah. Um, we they did change the theme, the song. Uh, I think it was after the first thirteen, and we came back to. Uh, as you know, I was pregnant the first thirteen yeah. shows. <laughs> hit it very well, by the way. You hit it very well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was a walking tent. <laughs> oh my God! But I was so happy. You know, I was so pleased. Yeah. And uh, at any rate, the uh, they they did change that theme. Mm-hmm. And uh, it did win an Emmy, actually. Wow. Do, do you actually sit and watch your old episodes? I mean, do you have the box set yourself? I do have the box set. No, I do not watch myself. <laughs> 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 no, I love it when someone else is watching it, and I can sort of peek around a corner. Well, <laughs> you know, i got to say, God bless you for embracing I Dream a Genie, uh, because so many people... I don't know, they, they get a little bitchy about, oh, I was typecast and I did this and that, but you've always seemed to enjoy it. You always came back and did the reunion movies. How did you feel when Larry Hagman didn't come back to do the reunion movies? Well, he was busy. Yeah. You know, when we did those movies, he was doing Dallas. Mm-hmm. And uh, every time we seemed to be shooting, he was shooting Dallas. So, <laughs> so it, it just, just didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, I did. I did appear on Dallas with him, so that was kind of fun. I gotta look that up. I didn't know that. My God! Wow, that's interesting. But yeah, it was. It was weird. <laughs> now, now, Larry, I, uh, Larry Hagman was was a great guy, but I heard you know 
he had another side too. But do you have a pretty good friendship with him, or how would you say it was? It was wonderful. Oh, that's good. It was just wonderful. He he was a uh, just a really loving, good guy. He had his demons. I yeah. mean, we all have you know something yeah. that's going on, but but uh, we we worked so well together. Yeah, um, it's like no one else I've ever worked with. Um, we were, I don't know, I guess our rhythms were the same. Uh, there was never a problem with us. And, and the other, you know, the reunion movies were enjoyable, but there was so much chemistry between you and Larry. I mean, can yeah. I say it wasn't quite the same? At least for me, you know. I'm sure <coughs> no. the other actors were good guys too, but, but, but it was nice you had a lot of your other supporting cast come back, you know, that played, you know, all the other characters. So oh, yeah, still had Hayden Rourke and Bill Daly. Yeah, and for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, I wanted to, to take a minute to uh, kind of wish you an early happy birthday. Um, <laughs> I know it's it's no secret because I've been seeing news stories everywhere, so I don't think you'll mind me telling the listeners your age. But <laughs> no. Wait, let's ask I her I can't permission. get away from it. Okay. <laughs> it, is it okay? Because <laughs> she might banish you into the desert or something. <laughs> No, it's fine. But no, we it's wanted fine. to wish you a happy birthday because in about two weeks you're gonna be ninety. Yes. How do you? How do you? I mean, that's a that's a that's a big birthday. You know, everybody celebrates milestones. There's you know, you turning twenty one, <laughs> turning forty, turning fifty. How do you feel about turning ninety? I really it, it, it's 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 odd. It really is odd because I have never thought about milestones and birthdays <laughs> ever 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 but this one uh people don't let me ignore it right and i think to myself how lucky i am that i'm here yeah. how lucky you are you look so good i mean my god and, and, and you it wasn't that long ago i saw on facebook you were zip lining yes <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that was in hawaii wow <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> I, I mean, I have to motivate myself to get into the studio. And I'm saying, okay, Terry, you were a kid when you were watching Barbara and I Dream a Genie, so I can do this. But other than that, <laughs> you motivate me. So I, I guess you're in good health, but is it true that you caught COVID for a while? Yes, yes. Wow. I did. My my husband went to see his family, and uh, they are <coughs> his grandchildren are uh, in their 20s, early 20s, and of course they gave it to him and he came home and gave it to me and my girlfriend but I was again a very lucky person because uh, uh, our doctor immediately got us over to Cedars and we had the uh, antibodies mm -hmm. um, they, they, they infused us with the antibodies and I hardly knew I had COVID yeah. mm. I had a slight headache that's it mm. Well, I wanted to I wanted to mention because a lot of your career has kind of focused around you know uh, f fantasy and the and and the fantastic kind of elements. There's a movie that you did that we absolutely love, and I wanted to ask you about your experience with it, and that's the Seven Faces of Doctor Lau. Oh God, I did two films with George Powell. Uh, his his imagination was out of bounds uh, absolutely was, yeah. oh my god and what beautiful beautiful films they were uh, and they were made at MGM which uh, of course at the time I was under contract to Fox and they loaned me to MGM and I suddenly realized what a wonderful what a difference <laughs> in, in the uh, uh, I shouldn't say this but Nobody's there anyway. Any, <laughs> I guess they've changed, <laughs> but but they were they really knew what they were doing at MGM. Wow. The best in every every area. I I had a wonderful time. I did the uh, Seven Faces of Doctor Lau and the uh, Wonderful World of the Brothers Grimm. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Now I've got to ask you about Tony Randall because he seemed like he was such a fun guy, and and he did all those characters and he, the makeup was so incredible. I believe it was William Tuttle. That did the makeup because I'm, right. I'm all into that kind of stuff, and and he looks so great. W was was it fun working with Tony? Oh my God, it was wonderful. It was just wonderful. He was a devil, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he really. Uh, we. I'll give you an example. We 
we would play, um, um, oh, I don't know, a card game in, in between set. Because when you have a, a, a film like that, there's a lot of technical stuff right. going on. Mm-hmm. And the actors kind of wait uh, on the technical people. So we would, we would play cards. And I, I don't remember if it was hearts or what it was. But he always won. <laughs> he constantly won. And I'm pretty good at, you know, cards. I said, what in the world is going on? And then I realized he always put me in front of the mirror. Oh, my oh. gosh. <laughs> and he could see my cards. He could see everything I was doing. See, I don't think you knew that Tony used to do a little magic on the side. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess. I don't know. He was a Dickens. So uh, I, I just screamed when he hit. This was <laughs> night shooting on yeah. the back lot at MGM. And uh, I don't know. Then we started racing around and Poor George Pell. He was such a sweet, sweet man. Wow. Didn't understand what the heck we were doing yeah. <laughs> with cards in our hands and screaming and yelling. You well, know, you know, I guess your your two George Pell movies are pretty famous, but I really don't understand why they're not up there with The Wizard of Oz and everything because they are just great family classics. You know, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. one of the reasons is that it was it was uh, shot in uh, I don't know if it's Cinerama or yeah. It, w- it was three cameras mm-hmm. and. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, a group in Idaho has uh, restored the wonderful world of the Brothers Grimm, but they had to do it on their own nickel mm. uh, because the studio wouldn't put any money into it. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to have a premiere in the theater on, uh, what is it, the C- Cinerama Dome or mm-hmm. whatever? Mm-hmm. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. You know, I've got to mention, so. uh, I'm an album collector, and one of my prized possessions in my record albums <laughs> is, is a green vinyl soundtrack called Harper Valley PTA. Okay, and, oh. and, and you're prominently displayed on there. I want to know about your experience doing it. Now, that was a movie and a series, right? That is correct, yeah. yes. Yeah, it was. And uh, I was so proud of that movie because, well, actually, proud of the man who, Phil Borak, who produced it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was a guy from, I don't know, Ohio or back east, uh, who had never done a, a film, never produced one, and uh, it was a very small budget, but he made lots of money on that movie, <laughs> <laughs> and I was so happy for him, yeah. and of course then it, uh, they did the TV series yeah. after that, but... Uh, you know, I don't... It, I don't think she really got the gist of, of what her song was about. Uh, Jeannie C. Riley, the song was written by Tom T. Hall originally. But I'd asked her about uh, the TV series and, and the movie, and she said while she loved you and thought you were great, she was a little upset. She thought the portrayal of the character was a little trashy, but isn't that what the song was really about, that everybody <laughs> thought she was trashy? But she thought it was a little trashy. She, she's a big-time Christian now. And she was a little oh, concerned. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. And yeah. <laughs> hey, you can't please everybody all the time, can you? Well, no, you can't. And, and uh, actually, that was the whole idea. Yeah. Of the yeah. song yeah. and the movie. Literally <laughs> what the song was about. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't trashy. She yeah. drank a few right. beers, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, as we as we wrap this up, Barbara, I wanted to ask you, uh, just in closing, how do you think uh, I Dream of Jeannie would play if it was made today? And the reason I ask that is because we have heard some comments from fans, uh, one in particular, uh, who had said on Facebook on one of the posts that they love you and they love your portrayal of Jeannie and and the the bouncy sunshiny you know character that she is but they had a problem because as a woman they felt that Jeannie being subservient to her master was a, a little bit of a sexist type of portrayal uh, do you how do you feel about that and do you think that a show like Jeannie would work today with everybody you know trying to be so politically correct all the time of course it would work. I mean, this is a classic theme. First of all, she's not a woman. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. True. That is such a good answer. <laughs> oh, she's my an God. entity. Yes. She's an entity. And she ignored that. But her master knew. And that's where you get the comedy. Yeah. He, he knew she wasn't real. Yeah. 
well, she was real, but she was an entity. She wasn't a human. Uh, she just ignored it, totally ignored it. Right. And, of course, any, what are you going to do, a thousand and one nights, you're not going to do that <laughs> because, because it's uh, subservient? It's a, yeah. it's a different era. Yeah. It's these, also these, these are some of those, those crazy fans you get at conventions that take it all too real that it, if you kill somebody in a movie, they think you really did it. I don't know what the deal is. But, but <laughs> well, that's true. Besides, uh, it made it okay because uh, Larry Hagman's character wound up marrying Jeannie uh, in the end. So they, they which had killed the show. Yeah, <laughs> it, it probably did. It probably did. As, as we leave, I've got to ask you this question. I thank you so much. You're such a legend for being on the show. If a genie appeared in your living room right now, can grant you <laughs> one wish. You've probably been asked this before. What would you wish for? I, you know what? I have been asked that before. <laughs> and there's absolutely no answer except yeah. wor world peace. There you yeah. go. Now, everyone says that. But what else? What else will you do? World peace and about 75 more years of entertainment by Barbara Eden. How's that? <laughs> uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> well, once again, for our listeners, check out the book, the new children's book from Barbara. It's called Barbara and the Gin, and uh, you can get it online, Amazon, anywhere where books are sold. Also, make sure to check out Barbara's website over at barbaraeden.com. And uh, Barbara, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. It has been such a pleasure to chat with you. Well, Tiffany and Terry, it has been lots of fun. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.